everyone, I'm very excited to show you today's tutorial, which is a Victorian puzzle purse. This is the perfect way to make a Valentine's Day card, but if you're watching this video at another time, this makes a great birthday card, Christmas card, whatever kind of special <laughs> occasion card. Um, so let's get into it. For this tutorial, you're going to need a large sheet of paper, a ruler, some scissors or an X-Acto knife, and the color medium of your choice. I'm using gouache, but you can use anything you'd like. And if you're new here, welcome, my name is Mina. I love to come out with crafty videos, so please be sure to subscribe. All right, so let's get started. For the paper, I recommend mixed media. It's just a very durable paper. You can paint on it, color on it. Um, but if you just have computer paper, that's perfectly fine also. You just wanna maybe just stick to colored pencils or pens. So for the puzzle purse, it's very important that you take your time and you go slow and in getting the perfect initial creases and cuts because just like with any origami projects, you don't wanna rush this part. The initial folds are the most important. So to make this square sheet, I'm going to take my paper and fold it into a right triangle and then I'm going to cut off the excess. Again, it's all about precision, so I recommend using an X-Acto knife and a ruler to get the cleanest cut, but you can also use scissors. You just wanna make sure you go slow. And that little tool off to the right there is called a bone folder. I highly recommend it. It's not essential for this tutorial, but if you like doing paper crafts, it is just, ooh, it's such a nice, satisfying little tool to get you those perfect creases. All right, so let's start off with our initial folds. You're gonna first divide the length and width of your paper, so it's a square, by three, so it'll be the same on both sides. And you're going to fold your paper into perfect thirds. Really take your time and you're going to do this horizontally and vertically as well. I'll make little diagrams here off to the side so you can see exactly what I'm doing. The bone folder is just so satisfying. <laughs> if you don't have a bone folder though, you can use a marker or a ruler. You just wanna make sure it's clean so you don't accidentally mark up your paper. All right, the next pre-fold is this diagonal fold here and you're going to do that on all corners. Okay. And if you mess up, that's okay. Take your time and make sure you do it right because again, if you mess up on these pre-folds, it's going to bite you in the butt later on. <laughs> All right, so this is where my message is gonna go. I'm just gonna put a post-it there so I can remember what's the front and what is the back. So for the front side, the side of the post-it note side, you wanna make sure all your folds are folding in. That's very important. And when you flip it over, you wanna make sure all your folds are folding out. Okay, next we're going to do the next series of our pre-folds. You're going to take the top right-hand corner and you're going to bring it to the bottom left corner of your messaging square. And you're going to repeat this for each corner. Now I'm going to turn it counterclockwise and I'm going to repeat the same pre-fold. Again, go slow, take your time. You don't want to rush this part because this whole mechanism hinges on everything falling into place. Turn it counterclockwise. Let me do it two more times. time turn it counterclockwise and bam those are all the pre-folds you're going to need <laughs> all right so now what we're going to do is you want to flip it back to your messaging side. And now we're going to kind of massage the creases into where it kind of falls into place. This part is really hard to explain, but you kind of want to massage it inwards like so, kind of alternating all around the corners and sides of the box. And then it'll just kind of magically fold into place. 
and you want to just really visualize that pinwheel shape. It's going to take some massaging, but you shouldn't have to create any new folds to get this. Everything should fall into place with those pre-folds. And bam, <laughs> there it is. I'm sorry, I wish I could explain that better, but you just have to massage it until it ultimately falls into place. And I like to press everything out once more. And there's our message. How neat is that? All right, so you're going to close it up, and now comes the fun part, the decorating part. I personally recommend going on Pinterest and looking up inspiration, but a lot of the Victorian puzzle purses utilized hearts, vines, flowers, things like that. And I'm using gouache um, because I love the matte finish of it, but you can use watercolor, acrylic, um, collage even, colored pencils, or just straight up ink and, ink and graphite. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the history of Victorian puzzle purses. So they have a very, very long history. I was finding out that they used to be used in Japan during the Heian era, and they were used um, to carry small portable items like buttons, needles, and stamps. And you'll see with that mechanism, it's kind of perfect because if you were to put anything in that interlocking section, that would be a great way to keep it safe in transit, and it's very flat. Um, and then it was by the early 1700s that the puzzle person began to be used as a way to share romantic messages. And people would write messages on each of the pinwheel for the lover to then read each piece at a time. And I recommend just really having fun with it. Take your time. The more effort you put into these, the more fun they look. <laughs> so... I'm taking off an inspiration from the 1700s puzzle purse, which is just covered in a lot of little delicate little flowers and vines. So I actually found this book in a thrift store in Texas and I just thought it was a really funny title and I thought the quotes inside were really sweet. Um, but the reason why I'm pulling it out for this video is because this booklet has really beautiful intricate borders around each quote, so I'm going to use it as inspiration to continue filling out my card. I love this little curvy, viney floral shape here, so I'm going to do my best to emulate that into each corner. And if you're more of a minimalist and you just want to do a couple hearts and maybe some bow and arrows or wings and things like that, That'll be equally as cute. I just personally love putting a bunch of little crafty details into the things I do. But the fact that you even make a card in and of itself is a really sweet gesture. Hey. My cat is very interested as usual. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it gave you a fun and creative way uh, to make your friend or your partner a Valentine's Day card. It's very relaxing and very fun for me and for the person who gets to open it. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a lovely Valentine's Day, whether it's with your loved ones or whether you're alone. I hope you do something fun and nice and that you get lots of candy. Anyways, thanks for watching.